everybody, welcome back once again to another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. Today we're talking about raw format with digital cameras and why would you want to shoot in raw and what is it? Uh, but before we get started on that, a couple things I want to talk about, just about the podcast and the show in general. Um, generally, things tend to slow down a little bit in the summer months and uh, I usually use that time a little bit uh, to think about what we could be doing with the show that we're not, um, some things that are working, some things that may not be working and kind of where we could go moving forward to keep that kind of on a steady pace of moving ahead every year. And uh, a couple things that I've thought about that would be really beneficial for the show this summer. Uh, the first thing is, is that I'm going to assemble the first ever Art of Photography Advisory Committee. And basically, the thought behind this is, it's just me who does the show. Okay, so, you know, I kind of do all the planning, all the filming, all the presenting, all the teaching. And while that's fine, uh, sometimes it's hard for me to see the bigger picture about what maybe viewers want to see or what maybe is a little bit frustrating that they're not seeing, you know, things of that nature. And so the idea is I want to put together an advisory committee of people who watch the show, preferably all over the world and preferably at different levels of experience. So I would like there to be some beginners on this committee and I would like there to be some professional people on this committee, maybe two. Uh, so what we're going to do is assemble that. If you want more information or you think you might be, want to be on the committee, uh, go to the Art of Photography website, which is www.theartofphotography.tv and I will post all the details there. Basically, you'll send me an email, but there's a special email address you need to use and read through the stuff so anyway go there and check it out if you're remotely interested in that but I want to put together a group of nine people to kind of advise on the podcast and so what we'll do is we'll if you have a webcam and a Google Plus account we'll do a meeting probably once every three or four months uh, at a designated time using the Google Plus Hangouts and so what we'll be able to do is go in there and I'll give you some preliminary information to look at beforehand and you can advise me on what you would like to see on the show um, I only have room for nine on here right now because I want to keep it big enough to where we have variety but I want to keep it small enough as well to where it's not chaotic and so if I don't choose you to be on the committee don't worry I want to rotate the committee out every so often but what I'm going to do is put everybody who sends an email to me on kind of the steering committee and so it's a committee that we won't meet together but um, you'll be able to give input via email messaging stuff like that and then I'll have an email list where I send you updates about what we talked about in the uh, advisor committee and all that I know this sounds very official but I think it would be a really cool way to kind of get this podcast moving in some directions that I haven't thought of yet. I think it's really easy anytime one person does a project for it to start getting stale and we're coming up on year four here and I don't feel like it's that stale but I do feel like there's a lot more we could be doing with this and I want to listen to the audience who watches this and find out what your thoughts are and what you're interested in doing. And I think that's really important. And so anyway, so check out the art of photography TV and I'll have all the instructions there. Uh, some other announcements that I want to talk about. Um, we also have a new website that we're working on. And by say we, I mean me and the mouse in my pocket, uh, but it, it's been long overdue. I would really like to do more with the website. And so planning on launching that probably sometime this summer, but we have some new things coming in the fall. Um, I'm expecting some Hol Holga project cameras coming back in the mail pretty soon. Uh, and also what I want to do is find a way I've been asked this, um, a lot of people made this request to me before and I haven't done it for a variety of reasons, uh, but we're talking about doing portfolio reviews. And so there may be a chance if you're interested in having me look at your work and give you kind of some critiques on it. Uh, I'm still working out the, the details on that, but uh, that'll probably be coming definitely in the fall. So anyway, a lot of new stuff on the horizon that I'm pretty excited about and um, you know, hopefully you will be too. Um, in the more immediate future, uh, this Saturday, June 16th, 2012, there is going to be a photography, art of photography meetup in Ireland. Now, I will not be there for this, but it's a great group of guys that are putting this on. And if you live in Ireland or you can make it over there pretty easily, I really suggest you check it out. Um, if you want details on this, head over to our Flickr group because there's a discussion going on in there right now. And the URL for that is flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography and you can see all the details there. I really wish I could make it. Um, if you're in the area, here's why you should go. It's gonna be in Dublin, it's gonna be at 11 in the morning. Uh, and the reason you should go is because every time I've been to one of these meetups, you end up meeting a lot of people who have mutual interest in photography. There's a lot to talk about, there's a lot of stuff you can learn from other people, um, it, and it ends up being a really cool sociable time. You, you end up having this bond with people you haven't ever met, and you get along really quickly. Uh, and I've had a lot of fun every time we've done one of these meetups, and I'm sorry I won't be at this one, but uh, I 
recommend you do so. If you're going to the meetup, um, I mentioned the new website a minute ago, and I'm going to have a section on there for the meetups that we've done. And so if you're going to the meetup, make sure you take a lot of photos. And if somebody's got a video camera and would like to shoot some video, I'd be happy to put it on the website. So anyway, uh, just send me an email and make arrangements on that. And I would love to have content and find out what you guys were up to. So um, anyway, so somebody recorded and uh, you know, at least take pictures and get me lots of stills and things like that. So that should be, should be a lot of fun. Okay, so on to our topic for today is uh, shooting raw with your digital camera. What is raw format? Uh, why would you want to use it? Why would you shoot with raw? Um, raw is basically, uh, the metaphor that you hear people use a lot of times is a digital negative. And while I love that metaphor, and it really is a digital negative, except it doesn't shoot a negative image, it shoots a positive image. Uh, but basically, much like a negative with a film camera, is it's going to be the best representation your camera can capture for the medium that you're using. And so essentially, most cameras shoot uh, either 12-bit images or 14-bit images and in their raw space. And these are actually convertible to 16-bit when you go into Photoshop, let's say, or Aperture, Lightroom, or one of those. And Compare that to JPEGs, which is your other choice of recording medium or file format on your digital camera. JPEGs are 8-bit. And so what does this mean? Well, first of all, you have a lot more light levels with 16-bit. Um, that's what that means, is, is basically each little spot on the sensor measures light and captures that. And when you have the higher the bit space that you have, the more levels of light you're going to get. And so this comes in really handy when you do need to do something to an image, like let's say you've got some shadows that you need to bring some detail out of. They've just gone too dark. Um, generally, when you shoot in raw format, there's a lot more room to play with. So you can get some nice subtle details in shadow areas. So it does impact your dynamic range somewhat, even though that's kind of determined by the sensor. Um, it captures more data than a JPEG file will. So no matter what camera you have, shooting in raw is always a better option for post-processing, uh, what you want to do with the camera, with the image when you're bringing it into the computer. Um, so that's obviously very important. The other thing I really like about shooting raw is that it will go ahead and mark the file with settings for white balance, uh, contrast, and saturation, but it does not set them in stone. So it just kind of gives you a setting. So when you bring it in, you're going to see the white balance somewhere. You're going to see the contrast set a certain place, you know, determined by the camera software. Uh, but it allows you to tweak these without destroying the image. And so what's really nice about that, particularly with white balance, is a lot of times if you're on a photo shoot and your light might be changing, you're switching areas, uh, you know, sometimes really dialing in white balance on the fly can be time consuming. And it depends, of course, what the photo shoot is and what you're doing. But shooting in raw format allows you to do all that in post-production, which is really nice. And so that's a real big advantage into shooting raw format. So, you know, compare this with shooting in a JPEG format. Well, basically, JPEGs are highly compressed. Okay, so the on the one side, they are going to be smaller files, much smaller files than raw files. Um, but things start to get set in stone. Like your white balance, while you can tweak this, it's going to start doing it destructively. Same with color saturation, contrast, and the like. Uh, you're not going to have as much light to play with um, if you need to bring something out of shadow areas. I'm not saying that shooting in JPEG format is bad or it's going to lead to a bad image. Uh, the image is going to be as good as the photographer takes it no matter what format you're shooting in. Uh, but know that uh, these are the differences depending on how much post-production work you think you might need to do on an image. So I think, you know, for me, nine times out of 10, uh, I'm going to be shooting raw. In fact, really 10 times out of 10. Now, when would you shoot in a JPEG format? Well, believe it or not, there are times where that might be important. Uh, first of all, remember, RAW files are bigger. JPEG files are smaller. So if you're shooting uh, an event, if you're shooting a wedding, if you're shooting family photos at holidays or something like that, a lot of times I will switch over to JPEG for that. And basically, it's because I know I'm not going to do a whole lot of post-processing on those images, uh, at least not in a critical sense. And I'm probably saving on file space. I want to shoot more images with the one or two cards that I have on me. Uh, so those are good reasons to shoot JPEG right there. Um, also also, too, if you are working in an industry um, that deals with having to upload images from the field, so if you think of like press stuff, uh, news websites, um, you know, sports photography, a lot of times, you know, you want to have that game-winning shot on the website uh, right after the game ends. And so, really, the best way to do that, you're not looking at having a whole lot of time to do post-processing on that image. Um, the photographer generally will go in 
in JPEG mode and just use the camera settings and his own skills, get the best images he can and then upload them immediately. And so those are scenarios where having a JPEG format really comes in handy. Um, the one thing that is a little bit concerning to me about raw format, it's not a total deal breaker, but you know, if you've been around computers long enough to see file formats and hard drives and all kinds of recording mediums change, uh, cameras are constantly getting better. And who knows, there probably will be a day where the format gets tweaked and maybe shots taken on older cameras it's harder to find computers that will read them now this is a worst case scenario uh, it's not something to worry about in the near future but probably something in the long run and you know I think about some of the work that I did years and years ago and I still have all my film negatives around and I've kept them in good conditions and and you know I can pull one out and make a print from it tomorrow if I want or today uh, whereas digital negatives I think what would be a drag is to wake up one day and want to pull a file out of your archives and do some tweaking on it and you find that it's long out of date and nothing will read it. Um, well, people have thought about this and there are some standardizations. Uh, a lot of times this is known as digital rot, R-O-T, uh, because things tend to rot as they get older. And uh, basically, uh, Adobe has come out with a file format where they're trying to standardize this a little bit. It's called a DNG format kind of abbreviation for digital negative. And if you were concerned about this and want to do all your conversion of raw files into the DNG format uh, for archiving, um, in fact, we probably should do a whole separate show on archiving because I think that's a pretty important topic. But you can do that. So if you use Adobe Bridge, um, uh, for instance, to import your images or Lightroom, you can convert them on the fly into that DNG format. So that, you know, that's an optional thing, but uh, might not be a bad idea. And, you know, coming up in a future podcast, we will talk about uh, digital rot and how to archive things and, you know, how best to hopefully have your images around as time comes by. I will say that JPEG seem to be a little more stable. So, it, you know, I know a lot of photographers who will save the final format into a JPEG. I don't like doing that because it seems awfully committal to put it down to an 8-bit color space when you might want to do a little tweak on it two years down the road. I tend to do that with my work a lot. Um, so anyway, um, you know, shoot raw. Check it out. Uh, anytime you're taking your shots really seriously and want to have that ability to edit and post, uh, it is more steps to edit and post, but it's totally worth it because you can really tweak in on, uh, on, on getting the white balance just right or the saturation just right or, you know, even the contrast. And, uh, you know, those things are pretty important. Uh, we'll do some more on this in future episodes, but uh, I want to give you an overview of RAW and why you would shoot it and hopefully you'll go check it out yourself. Generally uh, how you get there depends on camera to camera. Um, on my Canon there's basically a quality setting and you go in there on the menu and you can you can define it from there. Nikon's is very similar too and that's where you can go in and tell it to shoot RAW. Another thing you can do is if you're really paranoid about uh, needing to be able to, let's say you're shooting a baseball game for a you know ESPN and you need to be able to upload that shot but you also want your RAW file. A lot of high-end cameras will allow you to do both. Um, it slows the camera down just a little bit because it says two files to process but you can shoot a raw with a jpeg uh, on the side so that's kind of nice too so anyway that's uh it for today and thanks again for watching another episode of the art of photography we'll see you next time